Hey, everybody. It's the July 3rd holiday, which in the United States means the July 4th happened on Saturday, but gosh darn it, we're going to exercise our patriotic right to take a day off during the work week anyway. So most people have the day off, uh, as do Roger and Jenny, at least from this job. Uh, and I'm just going to do some headlines real quick. So uh, thank you, folks, for checking in with us. Here we go. Oh, 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 missed a step. See, without my producers around, I'm a mess. All right, here we go. Daily Tech News Show is brought to you by me. Oh, thanks, me. If you also wish to bring it, go to patreon.com slash acedetect. That's patreon.com slash A-C-E-D-T-E-C-T. This is the Daily Tech News for Friday, July 3rd, 2015. I'm Tom Merritt. Just me today. It is uh, the July 4th holiday. We're celebrating it a day early because otherwise we don't get the day off. Everybody gets Saturday off. Well, not everybody gets Saturday off. But a lot of people get Saturday off anyway. So just headlines here today. Um, but very happy to have you along. Hope you're uh, having a good holiday weekend if you're in the United States or maybe an extended Canada Day weekend if you're in Canada or just a great summer weekend if you're anywhere else in the Northern Hemisphere, a great winter weekend in the Southern. This worldwide thing, boy, those Beats One people make it look easy. It's harder than you think. Let's take a look at some headlines. More than 100 popular subreddits went private yesterday after Reddit unexpectedly dismissed Victoria Taylor. You might have heard her by her Reddit name, Tudor, who was director of talent or director of communications, depending on who you ask. And, and really what's important, she was an admin integral to the execution of Ask Me Anythings, AMAs. While Taylor's dismissal was the immediate cause of the protest, several mods expressed the feeling that Reddit admins have not respected the work put in by volunteer moderators for a long time. So this was a long time coming. Reddit co-founder Alexis Ohanian apologized for the lack of communication this morning on Reddit. Reddit CEO Ellen Powell posted that Reddit is working on better tools for mods. Uh, as to why Ms. Taylor got dismissed, Mark Bodnick of Cora, who works for Cora on Cora, posted that Taylor had resisted changes to AMAs, what he heard, uh, things involving video and monetization. Um, however, Bodnick's post was later deleted, so we don't know the veracity of it or why it was deleted. Uh, anyway, this morning, IAMA, I -A -A, the, the AMA subreddit, went public again with a post titled, Welcome Back explaining how the subreddit will work from now on. In summary, you should go read the post if you're really interested in this, but in summary, the mods were not satisfied with their conversations or the information provided by the Reddit admins over the past 12 to 24 hours. And uh, they wrote in their posts, quote, we will no longer be working with the admins to put together AMAs. Anyone seeking to schedule an AMA can simply message the moderators or email us at amaverify at gmail.com. Uh, and we should point out how Betuela Condulce linked to Gizmodo's timeline of the events in our own DTNS subreddit, which, by the way, is maintained by our own amazing mods, Scotty Rowland, Tom Gerke, Kyle, and Sebguns. Uh, so all props to them for any DTNS subreddit pleasure that you take. There's 5,000 people in there, man. DailyTechNewsShow.reddit.com. We are very proud and appreciative of them down <laughs> today more than ever. Uh, we're always very proud and appreciative of them. But it does seem like uh, Ms. Taylor was essential to the AMA process, uh, and the mods felt like they were ignored, uh, undervalued uh, in this decision that it's going to make running AMAs harder and they don't feel like this is new. They, it's sort of surprising, but maybe not unexpected is the vibe that you get when you read about this. Uh, many people are very angry. Loads, hundreds, as I said, of subreddits went dark in support because I think there is a general feeling of a lack of communication between the admins, which are employees of Reddit, uh, and the mods. Now, probably not in all cases. I know there are admins out there like Ms. Taylor, who uh, work very well with the mods and, and do communicate. And I don't want to brush everyone with the same, tar everyone with the same brush. There we go. Now I'm going to brush anyone with tar. Uh, but what I'm saying is, while there are probably some admins that, that are exceptions to this, there does seem to be a generalized frustration with Reddit. Uh, so anyway, it looks like the AMA folks just decided, you know what, we're just going to take this under our own wing and we're not going to work with the admins from now on. Uh, they were not satisfied by what they were hearing from the admins overnight. Uh, they certainly are upset that 
uh, Victoria Taylor is gone. Victoria Taylor has been very professional and has not said anything bad that I've read anyway about Reddit, only saying that she knows as much as anybody else and she was as surprised as anybody else. Uh, so yeah, this is a very critical point for Reddit. If, if you know anything about Reddit's history, they have survived on the goodwill of their community. And yes, they are known for having some horrible commenters uh, and horrible subreddits. Uh, but that is not the norm. Uh, the norm that doesn't get the attention are, are amazing communities uh, who thrive and provide great things like today I learned and ask me anything. Uh, and this is a this is a critical point. This is a critical turning point for them. One that Dig did not handle very well, as you recall. Reddit kind of stole Dig's thunder and ran with it and became the front page of the internet. And they are going to have to navigate these waters very carefully. I'm not saying that they're in danger of going under or that people will leave Reddit, uh, but it will change how Reddit is perceived and how Reddit operates no matter what they do. Uh, so they are setting their course for the next several years with this. And there's been a lot of frustration that, you know, Reddit is, n is not balancing monetization with community needs as well as the community would like. And that's always tough. Uh, that's not an easy thing to do. And, and Reddit's ability to do that from its beginning until now without causing more of these kinds of controversies, I, I think is quite surprising. So anyway, fingers crossed that they figure out how to make this work. I'm glad that AMAs are back. I'm glad that subreddits are going public again. Uh, if you don't understand what going private meant, it meant that only the mods could see them basically. Uh, so you take away page views from Reddit at that point uh, and you take content off the internet for for most people. Uh, so it was a, it was a pretty severe reaction. And I think the folks who are running the AMAs are reacting with a very measured hand. Uh, and yeah, sure, Waffle Office says, don't they still own it? Sure, Reddit owns it, but people don't have to participate in it. So you, if, you, if you go in with that attitude, then you're just going to drive everybody off as well. Um, anyway, we'll see what they do. We got other headlines. ZDNet reports on leaked renders from Evan Blass. Uh, Evan Blass discovered leaked renders, is the way I should say that, of something called the BlackBerry Venice phone that runs Android. The render shows a phone with a bunch of Android apps on it. Looks similar to the BlackBerry slider phone shown off at Mobile World Congress. Uh, and if you remember, that phone had a touchscreen covering a slide-out physical keyboard. Everyone expected that would be a BlackBerry phone, but it might, if this render is more than just a concept, might be an actual BlackBerry Android phone. I guess we'll find out soon enough. There's another rumor that is less verifiable. I mean, this this is an actual render. We know that. We don't know what it means. There's another rumor kicking around that maybe AT&T would carry this phone, but maybe that they may just be carrying the slider phone no matter what operating system it runs on. And Gadget passes along info from the Wall Street Journal that Casio is making a smartwatch. Details are few, but the watch has apparently been in development for a few years and is set to launch in Japan next March for somewhere around $400. So those of us who remember Casio being on the cutting edge of electronic watches uh, can have a little nostalgia moment. Uh, and I'm interested to see what they come up with. Will it run Android Wear? Will it run a proprietary operating system? What's it going to be? ZDNet's Mary Jo Foley reports Microsoft and Kyocera have settled a patent suit, signing an extended patent licensing agreement. Microsoft had sued Kyocera for allegedly violating seven patents regarding Kyocera's Android phone. The patents involved thread scheduling, display sensors, network management, and communication technologies, among others. So Microsoft put another one, I guess, in the win column. They didn't win in court, but they got a settlement and they got a cross-licensing agreement. TechCrunch reports Uber finally suspended its Uber Pop service in France Thursday night at 8 p.m. It is only the second time Uber has suspended a service in a city without a court order. The first time was in Portland, Oregon in the U.S. Uber is still operating in France. Uber X, Uber, and Uber Van uh, services will all continue to operate. Those services require professional drivers, though. Uh, so the, the, whole, the whole argument is over people who don't have to go out and get a professional registration. And Uber has said they will work with their Uber Pop drivers to try to get them a registration so they can operate under these other services. Reuters reports the Russian state Duma approved a law Friday requiring internet search engines to remove users' personal information from search results by request. Russian users will have the right to request the removal of information that is either incorrect or no longer relevant. 
regulation goes to President Vladimir Putin to be signed into law. Very similar to the right to forget laws of Europe uh, will now go into place. And of course, Yandex, the most popular search engine in Russia, very, very firmly against this, saying uh, it's an undue burden on them. Uh, Google hasn't said much about it, but they're less popular. They have less of a market share in Russia. And Gadget passes along Droid Life's discovery that Google submitted a gadget called A4RGG1 to the FCC for approval of its wireless radio. Pay attention to that GG1 part. The device is not classified as a smartphone, a tablet, or a media device, but it is mobile. And that leads to speculation it could be the next Google Glass model, GG1. You see what we're saying? The e-label for the device is also formatted in the same aspect ratio of the Google Glass's display. I'm actually not quite sure from this filing what else it could be. It would be even more shocking if it wasn't a new version of Google Glass. No idea when a filing like this might turn into an actual announcement. It might never. That Those things happen. happen. They with, uh, But it is a sign that we might be getting another model of Google Glass sometime soon. Reuters has the good news that Andre Borschberg successfully landed the Solar Impulse 2 in Kalealoa, Hawaii on Friday, officially setting the non-stop solo flight record at 120 hours. Uh, congratulations uh, to uh, Captain Picard and Borschberg. Uh, the next leg will be to Phoenix, Arizona. Bertrand Picard, of course, the other pilot. Uh, they'll make the last leg when they go back to Dubai, which is where they started on March 9th. They'll make the last leg together as well. So I, I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one who's who's uh, who's impressed by this. But that that flight against the Pacific really kick or against. I, <laughs> Maybe that is a better way of phrasing it. The flight across the Pacific uh, that was 120 hours uh, really captured my attention at what an amazing engineering human uh, team feat this is. And finally, Brian Blank submitted the Engadget story to dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. That cooperative group Wired West has gained support to roll out gigabit municipal fiber internet in 22 Massachusetts towns. The service will start at $49 a month for 25 megabits per second and range up to $109 a month for gigabit. Towns have raised $24.5 million of the $79 million in funding necessary, so they need to raise some more money. And town councils need to approve the costs towns have yet to formally join as well uh, but a little uh, little community fiber happening out there in massachusetts and that is a look at the headlines bertrand not jean-luc picard just settle down uh, one more thing before we get out of here. Pick of the day uh, was Walter a while back, and we've got Eric from the Parrot Haven, Edgewater, New Jersey. I like that it's not weather-related, something that Edgewater is known for, a haven of, for parrots. If you are a parrot and you haven't checked out Edgewater, New Jersey, you probably should. Uh, Eric said, I wanted to make you aware of an app I use called Vox, V-O-X. Although it doesn't handle the ripping aspect of your CDs, it's a great media player, and they just introduced a service called Loop that will let you store your tracks online. Uh, so uh, take your CD tracks, uh, put them into Loop to play, store them online. You've got an online locker. Things that people were sued out of existence for in 2000 are apparently now regular things. Uh, anyway, thought he would be worth a mention. Thank you, Eric Vox. V-O-X, not Vox Media, but Vox, the music player or media player. Send your picks to feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com and you can find my picks at dailytechnewsshow.com slash picks. Well, that's it. Uh, like I said, short show, headline show today. Uh, but we do these headline shows even on days off like this because uh, you are amazing bosses. And we thank every one of you for finding value in the show. Patreon.com slash Ace Detect uh, will show you all the amazing people helping us out and show you how to help us out. If you feel you're getting value from the show, we just ask for a dollar a month. If you're getting a dollar a month worth out of this, uh, then you can you can help us out with that dollar. We'd love to have it. DailyTechNewsShow.com slash support for all the ways to keep the show going. Our email address is feedback at DailyTechNewsShow.com. You can give us a call 512-59-DAILY. That's 512-593-2459. Listen to the show live Monday through Friday, usually at 4.30 p.m. Eastern at AlphaGeekRadio.com and visit our website, DailyTechNewsShow.com. Back with the full show on Monday and Veronica Belmont. Talk to you then. The show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> All right. Short and sweet. About 
well, not quite half the length of a normal show. But I will keep doing, uh, I will keep streaming while I, uh, while I do the edit here. And um, if you want to start asking some questions in the chat room, I'll, I'll answer a few of those once I'm done with the edit. Uh, I might try to answer a few of them while I'm editing, but I also don't want to screw this up because I've got Big Jim's Tech and Trade to put into the timeline. And that's actually the biggest thing that I, do. I wanted, to, uh, wanted to make sure I didn't forget. Uh, and that'll help, uh, that'll help give you a little extra content there. Tech and Trade, if, if you haven't listened to the audio uh, podcast, uh, Big Jim uh, talks about customs law and how it invents, uh, how technology affects it. And uh, it's, it's really interesting stuff because it's something I know nothing about personally. And he is a fan of the show, so he ties it into the kinds of things that if you're a fan of the show, you're going to be interested in. Uh, so, so go check out the audio version for that at dailytechnewsshow.com. Wow, that, uh, that level eighty happens quick when it's only 14 minutes long, doesn't it? Everything's quicker today. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm laughing because I'm looking at, like, Tech and Trade is almost the same size as the show today because it's, it's just a couple minutes long, but the show's not that much longer. Uh, all right, let's get some audio out of here. Uh, yeah, so anyway, if you got any questions, pop them in the chat room. And I will ask me anything. That's kind of I, that's that's why I had the inspiration to to do that. I should probably do a real ask me anything, but now I feel bad. Those guys are overworked. I will do one one day. I swear. Uh, P. Delahanty asks, "Did I miss anything?" Uh, yeah, kind of. The whole show. Sorry. Hey, but new FSL tonight coming out tonight. Right anybody's not following FSL, uh, what you've been waiting for, go to fsltonight.com and take a look at what's happening with the Los Angeles Guardians of the Galaxy or the Coruscant Senators. It's been a tough season so far already, three games in for the Gallifrey Time Lords. There's all kinds of things going on over there. And Justin Robert Young and myself bring you all the analysis every week as soon as the games are played. Obviously, we have to wait for the games to be played since it's not an imaginary league that we make up as we go along. Of course. I have to concentrate when I type because I, as you many of you know, I am really bad at typos. My favorite Hearthstone card... Uh, the portal, the portal card that just, just gives you something fun. Or web spinner, big fan of web spinner. And I know the uh, uh, the tavern brawl having web spinner. That was one of my favorite class challenges. I could do it on the uh, Diamond Club subreddit. That's true. Hey, yeah, that's a really good idea. Uh, top three songs of all time. I don't know how to answer that. I like songs. I don't know if I can pick three. I'd have to look at a playlist, I'll be honest. Uh, the three that are coming into my head are the old 97's Time Bomb, uh, Factory Belt by Uncle Tupelo, and Ooh Child. And I always forget the name of the... Uh, the, the group. Uh, the, f the five stair steps. Ooh, child. But also, uh, now, I, I do like uh, Red Bones, Come and Get Your Love. I don't know if that'll wear off over time. And I... Uh, make Your Own Kind of Music is a great one. Oh, uh, Portal. The, uh, the you know... Uh, Want You Gone and um, uh, This Was a Triumph. I can never remember. I'm horrible at songs. Yeah. The Cake is a Lie song. This was a triumph. 
making a note here. Huge success. I should not sing you my three favorite songs. And I've also named six. I'm not sure that that's helping. Uh, yes, working on any new novels, BioCal asked. Yes, one that will be called Pavaria is done by me and waiting for my editor uh, to take a stab at. So hopefully that'll be out in a couple months. And another, which was last year's NaNoWriMo, called Pilot X, I, I've just started polishing up on. Uh, let's see. How much did Ponyville pay jury to stop hating them? Nothing. Ponyville did not uh, compensate. There are, these rumors are inaccurate. They are uh, nefarious. And I want to say that Justin is well above the price that Ponyville offered. I mean, he's well above taking a bribe from a team to change his opinion about them. Uh, Gordon McLeod wants to know if we script the fan caller segments. No, we don't. Uh, what we've done in the past is leave them wide open to people or if they're, if, if perhaps maybe they would like, uh, we have given them guidance on like, here's an issue you could make a call on. Uh, there've been a couple of times where we wrote up things and then people riffed off of it. Uh, so there, there've been a couple things I guess you could call scripting, but most of the time, no. And all these Hammond, all these calls from Hammond this year. Uh, have all been his own creation 100%. So thanks to Hammond for that. Uh, plans for the fourth. Uh, try to stop our dog from panicking. We have considered things like driving to Palm Springs and other things to keep our 12-year-old dog from having a heart attack because she hates fireworks so much. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I don't really know. We don't really have any real honest to goodness plans. Uh, we, we just really like to relax when we get these days that we can not do anything and just take advantage of not doing anything. Tech news for July 3rd, 2015. Dateline. Tech and news together on the 8th. Maybe we should just create a 24-hour... I mean, I know Alpha Geek Radio is a 24-hour radio station, but... 24-hour news news station, Alpha Geek News Radio. We could have traffic and weather on the 8th. Uh, Leroy Jenkins, something, five, this was a triumph. Still alive. Thank you, Tondagosa. Um, I didn't miss anything about Vox. Purple Fishhead says, you missed the most important part of Vox. I didn't pick it. Uh, so your criticism would be better directed at Eric from New Jersey. Uh while Philophagus would like us to sing my favorite songs. I don't think you really want that. I really don't. Uh, I'm actually here for a DTNS. Uh, Travis, you're late. I did it early. My fault. Thunder shirt? <laughs> yes? Is that appropriate? I don't know. Uh, wow, good questions, you guys. Thank you for that. I'll answer a couple more here in a second. I just got to make sure that I haven't screwed up this posting. We are processing your track for playback. Oh, a comment from Rooker about the LA Guardians would be amazing, Patrick. That's a great idea. Beats One is starting to repeat some songs. This is me on the regular So You Know, for instance. They played that just a, like a couple of hours ago, and they're just they're playing it again. That's very radio-like. Uh, no, I didn't hear the Night Attack uh, thing. I'll have to take a look. I'll have to take a listen, rather, to the Night Attack. Worldwide. I heard they used uh, the Seb Guns capture. Awesome. Thanks, Dashcom. I'll take. A, I'll definitely take a look at that. Uh, any plans for a more galactical event a la the World Cup, considering we're in the fourth year of the sport? Lau Roman, that is a VFSL every year. It is a galactical event a la the World Cup. It is, it is that 
all the time. You can't get more galactical than that, including the Elevation Tournament, which is super galactical. Um, I'm not sure what more you could do. Thundershirt dogs. So, oh my gosh. I, I think that would freak my dog out even more, but thank you. I'll take a look at it. How well do you think Ant-Man will do in the box office movie draft? I think it'll do well. I do. All right. Uh, did it publish? Did it publish? This is me on the regular, so you know. Oh, I did that thing. Please try again. Restore the backup. Publish again. Oh, WordPress. You and your silly antics. Now I can see if I actually... Uh, Daily Tech News Show. <laughs> Not everyone agrees. Well, it's up. It's good. I'll get the video up uh, later on as well. But the YouTube video should be there. Well, the YouTube video is still going because I'm on it. Uh, let's see. What else we got here? Weren't there 3,600 teams in the elevation round? Yeah. Something like that. I think more, actually. Uh, why didn't I get your mass text? Oh, you weren't in my context, BioCow, but now you will be, so you should get all my mass texts. All uh, right. Insanely calm dogs. What? That's not what I want. Well, that's it. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. Stay tuned for a rerun of Current Geek, because there is no Current Geek this week either, uh, following your late local news.